Do you think it's going to go well with the Jews in the United States or anywhere else in the world? When they're trying to pass even Sharia law in the United States? I mean, come on, wake up! You know, people need to wake up what's going on. My brothers in Israel, you need to wake up. Erev Tov. My name is Stephen ben Danun, and you're watching Israel Live. Uh, today in news out of Israel, we have uh, Deputy British Prime Minister opposes a kosher slaughter ban. Uh, Arut Sheva reporting this here that Britain's Deputy Prime Minister Nick Clegg said on the weekend he disagreed with the call of the incoming uh, president uh, of the British Veterinarian Association, John Blackwell, to ban shachita, uh, the Jewish ritual for slaughter in you know, Islamic halal slaughter laws. Uh, Clegg said, according to the BBC, that stopping this type of slaughter would remove the right of Jewish communities in this country, Muslim communities in this country, to stick to their religious beliefs about how they prepare food and how animals are slaughtered. Uh, he went on to speak about this, and really, we have to ap applaud the Prime Minister for making a stand, because Poland, uh, along with several other comp countries in the EU, have already banned the slaughter practice there, that according to Judaic law, that God has commanded uh, the children of Israel to keep kosher. It's just a wide variety of things that is that is upcoming, and it reminds me of what happened to Israel when Rome was invited to Israel back uh, before uh, Yeshua had came on the scene. Uh, that, that when, when Rome was invited then, they came to Israel, Israel thinking they would come for a peaceful means only to change the laws and forbid kosher laws and to no longer allow to, uh, for, for the Jewish people to keep mitzvot. And here we are seeing the same thing played out again. Even uh, there is a push now in the European Union to ban uh, circumcision according to Jewish practice. We need to really begin to look and see what is happening. All this evil is just on the horizon, and it seems to be no, no end in sight anywhere uh, exactly of what the evil forces that are at play against the Jewish people, what they will go. Of course, in the article here, they mentioned the Muslims having the, uh, a similar type of practice as well. Uh, but if you notice more and more, the bans are directly direct, uh, directed towards uh, the Jewish people. Um, another thing I'd like to bring to your attention, uh, and, and this kind of goes along with what's really going on in the background, and uh, this here is um, reported also with Israel National News, UK funding NGO, which is the... Um, uh, that's the Norwegian Refugee Council Lawfare on Israel's Legal System. Now, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about this group here and what they're doing, but it's uh, one of the first times I've seen this on Israel's na uh, national news website where they're beginning to expose this group that's in the background. It was, the group was formed in 1998 uh, with the sole purpose for undermining legal or to go into to a country such as Israel and to just just totally clog up the judi judicial system. Uh, it's another way of breaking Israel, um, financially and many other ways. Let me just kind of uh, read some of the information from this article here. The UK, along with uh, the European Union and other European governments, has been investing massive public funds in an NGO engaged in lawfare against Israel's legal system. Uh, that there again, Norwegian Refugee uh, Organization is what that is, or, or Council, or the NRC, the National Refugee uh, Council. The NGO called the Norwegian Refugee Council, or the NRC, has been acting to sabotage Israel's legal uh, processes. According to the report, which was released in time for British Prime Minister David Cameron's visit to Israel on Wednesday, from 2011 to 2015, the UK provided six million pounds, roughly $10 million to the NRC 
one of the largest single grants to any NGO in the region used to pursue legal cases aimed at influencing Israel's policies. Lobby for the international sanctions against Israel and supporting international campaigns of de uh, denomination, reported NGO Monitor President Professor Gerald Steinberg. Between the UK and uh, the EU, Norway, and Sweden, NRC received over $20 million between 2011 and 2013. If you don't realize there's a campaign to undermine Israel, to force Israel into accepting a two-state solution, then there's something wrong. When we get into a little bit more of the background of the NRC or the, or the uh, NRO, however you want to, or NGO, uh, you will begin to see exactly what I'm talking about, what their agenda is, what the motive is. Um, so we're going to read in this report here, evidence and analysis to form the basis for international pressure on Israel as well as change Israeli policy and practice. The new report reveals that, uh, that NRC has used the funds to launch a massive 677 legal cases to disrupt the Israeli judicial system, to increase the workload for the courts and the Supreme Court to such an extent that there will be a blockage. Regarding the scale of legal attacks, Steinberg noted, we know of no other example in the world where democratic countries are engaged in such activity on a massive scale. This direct involvement of the UK and other government fund funders via the NRC stands in direct contradiction to efforts to negotiate peace and the ethical norms that govern relations between democracies. Well, you know my brother Steinberg there, it is just evident the world doesn't care about Israel. The governments of this nation could give a flip less about our people. It is time for the Jewish people to take a stand. And, and you know what, if, if we have to, I, I would have to say, throw out all the Arab people that have no desire to be a part of Israel as a nation. I mean, we have over one, mil one and a half million Palestinians living in Israeli, uh, in, in Israel, known as the State of Israel today, as Israeli citizens. They have representation in the Knesset. There is no reason why we cannot have the exact same thing in the West Bank or in Gaza. Well, that would be if it wasn't, or excuse me, if it wasn't a biblical, prophetic uh, move. It was going to change the scene anyway. God is bringing all nations to Israel for a final judgment. This is only part of it. Every little move that they make only shows their colors. It shows the colors of the EU, and of course, in the background, nations are already planning and preparing for the boycott, the sanctions that they're going to do. And my friends, especially the Christian friends that Israel has, it really stands with Israel. This is an example of what the mark of the beast will be. You, so many times people are looking at this as the Mahadi or the Arab guy that's gonna rise up to be the Antichrist. It's not gonna be that, friends. It's going to come through a governmental system that is led by the Vatican. In fact, if you run in the Norwegian Refugee Council and put the word Vatican in there, you'll be surprised at some of the articles that you'll come up because they're definitely uh, sponsored by the Vatican. Uh, let's just read this here. The International Displacement Monitoring Center, the IDMC, or excuse me, let me start with the headlines of this article here. And this is in uh, or, uh, uh, UNHCR, the UN Refugee Agency. Norwegian uh, Refugee Council, International Displacement Monitoring System, the International Displacement Monitoring uh, Center, the IDMC, established in 1988 by the Norwegian Refugee Council, was formerly known as the Global IDP Project. It's the leading international body monitoring conflict, including inter internal displacement worldwide, at the request of the United Nations. Now you know who's behind it. Well, the Vatican controls the United Nations. And uh, as well as they control the United States military, and as well as your taxes here in America go to England, and from England they go straight to the Vatican because the Queen of England is under the direct authority of Pope Francis himself. Uh, so, as I say, you're getting an example of what's happening to Israel. 
how they are manipulating Israel, they're boycotting Israel, they're going to control Israel's funds, it'll even come to a place where Israel will be forced to go to a Roman currency. Now, whether or not they do this as a cashless society or not that'll be worldwide, I don't know. The only reason I say they'll go to a Roman currency eventually in the signing of this agreement is because we see a comment that was made by Jesus of Nazareth when he was on earth when they asked him, should we pay tribute to Caesar? Yes or no? The rabbis asked him that question. And he asked for a coin. And on there was Caesar's uh, face on there. He said, render to Caesar's what is his, and to God's what is his. I believe we're going to see a repeat of history. We're already seeing that there is a negotiation going on that allows Rome back into Israel and back in control because Israel is going to be tricked as well as the Palestinians. And I'm not against Palestinian people. I'm not against the Palestinian people. I just simply believe that Israel only wanting the small piece of land that God gave her many thousands of years ago should be entitled to their homeland. And it was mandated that the Palestinians have the area that is known as Jordan today by the British mandate. Why not reestablish it the way it should be? Back to this, uh, to, to, the, to, the, to how this organization began, there is a, a website that is very interesting. It's called the NGO Monitor, uh, exploiting justice on how the e UK, EU, and Norway fund NGO lawfare versus Israel. An interesting article I came across here. In fact, this is part of where um, uh, Israel National News got their information to write their article. In 2011-2013, the Nor Norwegian Refugee Council spent over $20 million provided by the UK, EU, Norway, and other governments for a legal advocacy program in Israel. These governments financed hundreds of cases in Israel's courts and caused extensive damage excuse me, to the integrity of the legal process in Israel, Canada, and elsewhere. NRC's Information Counseling and Legal Assistance, the ICLA, projects exploit judicial frameworks to control and manipulate Israeli policy outside any democratic framework and to promote in international de uh, delegitimization campaigns the evidence suggests that the NRC is carrying out a strategy of trying, quote, unquote, every possible legal measure to disrupt the Israeli judicial system to increase the workload of the courts and the Supreme Court to such an extent that there will be a blockage, end of quote there. The scope of the NRC's inter uh, interference in the Israel Israeli legal system is unprecedented in relations between democratic countries. NRC financed at least 677 cases that received full legal representation at the relevant court administrative body in Israel according to the assessments of the project. NRC is responsible for 51% of all the house demolition cases in the Area C of the West Bank and 35% of all uh, legal cases dealing with houses, housing land and property claims in East Jerusalem and Area C. The government funders selected NRC precisely to provide evidence and analysis to form the basis for international pressure on Israel, provide more effective advocacy, which would be more likely to result in changes in policies and practices. So many things that go on in the background we just have no idea of. Anyway, we will be taking up this battle in Israel very soon, defending the homeland, the homeland for the Jewish people, Israel. We hope you join us. We hope you're a part of this Israel Live from the homeland beginning at the end of this month. God bless you. Baruch Hashem.